Hi, hello. This is Ramesh Kumar Lalkota, Assistant Professor of Botany, MBS Government Arts and Science College at Anamas, Mahabub Nagar, Telangana State. In our last class, we discussed about megasporogenesis and uh, embryo sac development, that is monosporic type of embryo sac development and bisporic type of embryo sac development. Okay. Uh, today we will see tetrasporic type of embryo sac development. Prior to that, we will have a glance in, uh, about our previous class. Okay, so what is megasporogenesis? Megasporogenesis is nothing but formation of megaspore nuclei, that is a megaspore tetrad from megaspore mother cell. Inside the archisporium, uh, the archisporium itself acts as megaspore mother cell in uh, tenionucellate ovules, whereas in crassinucellate ovules, one of the cell undergoes differentiation and acts as archisporial cell. Okay, this archisporial cell undergoes divisions, or it may directly act as megaspore mother cell. This megaspore mother cell after meiosis develops megaspore tetrad. Inside the megaspore tetrad, we have four megaspore nuclei. Okay, based on the on uh, how many number of these megaspore nuclei participate in the further development of embryo sac, the embryo sac development is divided into monosporic type, bisporic type, and tetrasporic type. If only one megaspore is functional and all the three megaspore nuclei get degenerate then such type of megaspore uh, or embryo sac development is known as monosporic type of embryo sac development and if uh, see here only one megaspore out of which see after this is the meiosis division after the meiosis a linear tetrad of megaspores of formation takes place you can see the four nuclei here megaspore nuclei which are applied in nature, out of which three get degenerate and only one becomes functional. See, here you can see the three, they are degenerating and only one becomes functional. From this functional megaspore, if the embryo sac development takes place, then such type of uh, embryo sac development is known as monosporic type of embryo sac development. And uh, we saw that it has two types. One is the eight nucleate type and the other is Four nuclear type. Eight nuclear type example is polygonum type and uh, four nucleate enothera type. In our last class, we discussed it. Okay. So, bisporic type. During the megasporogenesis, that is uh, during the meiosis process, uh, you see here two diode formation takes place. This is one diode with two nuclei and this is the other diode with two nuclei. So, one of these diodes becomes functional and the other degenerates. And this functional diode represents two nuclei. So this is known as bisporic type of embryo sac development. And this functional diode develops into an embryo sac. And this is known as bisporic type. And it is again of two types based on the uh, diode which is functional. If the calazole diode is functional, we call it as allium type. And if micropylar diode becomes functional, we call it as endomion type. So, this is regarding our uh, yesterday's class, last class. Today, we will see tetrasporic type of development of embryo sac. Here, you can see that all the four nuclei, see, these are the nuclei which are formed as a result of uh, meiosis. These four nuclei, if they are functional, all the four nuclei take, takes part in the development of the embryo sac, then it is known as tetrasporic type of embryo sac development. Today we will see uh, what are the tetrasporic types of uh, different, different uh, tetrasporic types of uh, embryo sac developments. Okay. Uh, so see here, this uh, tetrasporic type of uh, embryo sac development, all the four nuclei which are formed as a result of meiosis, they are functional, they take part in the development of the embryo sac. It is again of uh, seven types. It is classified into seven types. What are the uh, seven types? Uh, out of the seven, three are 
16 nucleate that is peperomia type, pinea type and drusa type and 3 are 8 nucleate type that is fritillaria type, plumbago type and adoxa type and 1 is 4 nucleate type that is plumbujala type. Actually what are these 16 nucleate, 8 nucleate and 4 nucleate? And at the end of the embryo sac development that is in a mature embryo sac if 16 nuclei are present, then it is a 16 nuclear type. If only 8 nuclei are present in the mature embryo sac after its complete development, then it is called as 8 nuclear type. And if only 4 are present, then it is 4 nuclear type of embryo sac development. Okay. So, again here, based on the arrangement of 4 nuclei in the CNO, Sporangium. What is sinosporangium? Here you can see that all the nuclei are present in a single cell that is megaspore cell. Uh, yet cell, wall for, uh, cell membrane formation has not uh, taken place. That is all the nuclei are present in the same cytoplasm of the same cell. So multinucleated cell is known as a sinosporangium. See all the four nuclei you can see within a single cell. So, based on the arrangement of these four nuclei in this sinosporangium, uh, there are uh, three different types of sinosporangia are seen. See, here this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 arrangement of uh, nuclei seen. See, here at the calazal end, you can see one uh, nuclei. At the micropylar end, you can see one nuclei, and at this end, lateral end, you can see one nuclei, and the other lateral end, you can see another nucleus. So, these four nuclei are present at the four ends of this uh, uh, this uh, megaspore cell. Okay, so it is found in peperomia, pinea, and plumbago. All these three plants show this type of development, 1 plus 1 plus 1 development. Here in the Drusa, Fritillaria and Plumbugella, you will find 1 plus 3 arrangement. That is, one nucleus is present at the micropylar end and the remaining three are present at the calazal end. This is the calazal end and this is the micropylar end. Only one nucleus is present at the micropylar end and the remaining three are present at the Calazal end and it is seen in Drosa, Fritillaria and Plumbagella. And uh, the last one is 2 plus 2 arrangement that is Calazal end shows 2 nuclei and the micropylar end shows 2 nuclei. It is, this is 2 plus 2 type and it is seen in Adoxa. This, uh, this is the arrangement of nuclei within the Sinosporangium. Okay. Then See, 16 nucleate type of tetrasporic embryo sac development. The first one is peperomia type. It shows 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 arrangement in the megaspore cell. Okay, so what happens here? As a result of mitotic division in the megaspore mother cell, four nuclei are formed. As a result of meiotic division, four nuclei, the megaspore mother cell underwent meiosis and uh, as a result, four uh, haploid nuclei are present in the megaspore cell. Okay, so these four nuclei undergo two more mitotic divisions. This nuclei undergo one mitotic division resulting in the formation of two nuclei and again the two nuclei undergo uh, one more mitotic division resulting in the formation of four nuclei. See, as a whole, at uh, each end you will find four nuclei. All these four nuclei at each end are formed after mitotic division. That means all the nuclei which are present within the megaspore cell, they undergo two mitotic divisions resulting in the formation of four nuclei at each end. Okay. So out of these 16 nuclei, see these are a total of 16 nuclei present. Two at the micropylar end develops into egg apparatus. Only two of the four, uh, four nuclei which are present here, they develop the plasma membrane, okay, cell membrane, and uh, they convert into egg apparatus. In this egg apparatus, you will see only two cells. The centrally located big cell is known as egg cell. 
Dargeson cell is synergid. Only one synergid is seen in peperomia. Okay. Then, yite nuclei from all the ends move towards the center and they fuse together to form secondary polar nucleus, which is yite N in condition. That means all the yite nuclei fuse together to form a octoploid secondary polar nucleus and the remaining six nuclei moves towards the uh, calicel end and they form the antipodals. These antipodals, they may be, uh, they may degenerate either before fertilization or after fertilization. And this octoploid secondary polar nucleus, it fuses with one of the male gametes and forms the nanoploid primary endosperm nucleus, which undergoes uh, repeated divisions resulting in the formation of endosperm which provides uh, nutrition to the developing zygote okay. and the egg cell uh, fuses with uh, one of the male gametes and uh, forms the zygote okay so this is uh, the 16 nucleate tetrasporic type of develop uh, embryo sac development in peperomia Now, we will see how it develops in penia. It is also 16 nucleated embryo sac development. It also shows, penia also shows 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 condition. That means all the four uh, nuclei are arranged at four ends. One at the calicel end, one at the micropylar end, one uh, at the lateral end and opposite to that end. One more is arranged. So, as a whole, four nuclei are arranged. And all these four nuclei, they undergo two mitotic divisions resulting in the formation of 16 nuclei. Okay. So, out of the 16 nuclei, one nuclei from each end moves towards the center, resulting in the formation of a tetraploid secondary polar nucleus. See, one nucleus uh, from here, that is calicel end, one nucleus. Uh, from this lateral end and one from this lateral end and the one from the micropylar end move towards the center resulting in the formation of a tetraploid. All the four nuclei fuse together to form a tetraploid nucleus. Okay. The remaining three which are present at the micropylar end develop into egg apparatus. Here the egg apparatus has three cells okay the cell membrane uh, formation takes place and they, it, it, uh, this uh, three uh, the nuclei which are present towards the micropylar end converts into egg apparatus the centrally located cell is larger in size when compared to the two lateral cells this central located cell is egg cell and uh, the two lateral cells are synergies here you can see two lateral cells but uh, earlier in uh, peperomia we saw only one Synergy, but here two synergies are present, and the remaining three cells at the two lateral ends as well as at the calicel end they convert into antipodals. Soon they degenerate, all the antipodals they degenerate uh, soon after, or, uh, either before or after fertilization. Okay, this is penia type of uh, embryo sac development. Here you can see uh, a tetraploid secondary nucleus but earlier we saw octoploid secondary nucleus in peperomia here you can see tetraploid uh, secondary polar nucleus this is the development of embryo sac in penia the next one that is drusa type 16 nucleate tetrasporic type of embryo sac development in drusa Okay, see this is the Drusa type here. It shows 1 plus 3 condition. That means one nucleus is present at the micropylar end and the remaining three at the calicel end. Okay, so uh, in Drusa type, these nuclei which are present at the two ends, the two poles, they undergo two mitotic divisions. First two mitotic division results in the formation of one, new, uh, one 
one, uh, two nuclei from one at the micropylar end and uh, six nuclei at the calazal end from three micropylar, <coughs> three nuclei at the uh, calazal end. So these six again undergo one more mitotic division resulting in the formation of 12 nuclei and here the two undergo one more mitotic division resulting in the four nuclei at the micropylar end. <coughs> And one from each end, that is from the calazal end and from the micropylar end, move towards the center to form secondary polar nucleus. Here, the secondary polar nucleus is diploid in nature because only one nuclei from each end moves towards the center and fuse together to form secondary polar nucleus. And the remaining three, which are present at the micropylar end, uh, develops the cell membranes and they form the egg apparatus. In egg apparatus, you can see the three cells. The one which is at the center is known as egg cell, which is uh, larger in size when compared to the two lateral cells. And these two lateral cells are known as synergies. And the remaining 11 cells which are present, uh, nuclei which are present at the calazal end also develops the plasma membrane and they convert into antipodals. Again, these antipodals, they may degenerate either before or after the fertilization. Okay, so in Drusa type, you can see only diploid secondary nucleus. Okay, so in Peperomia type, we saw eight uh, uh, nucleated or uh, octoploid secondary nucleus. In Penia type, it is uh, tetraploid one, and in Drusa, it is diploid secondary polar nucleus. These are the three different types of tetrasporic type of embryo sacs with 16 nuclei. Okay. So the next one, the eight nucleate tetrasporic types. Here also we have three. One is Fritillaria type, the other one Plumbago, and the last one is Adoxa type. In Fritillaria type, what is actually eight nucleate tetrasporic embryo sac? At the end of uh, the for development of the embryo sac, we will find eight nuclei within that embryo sac. Such condition is known as eight nucleated type. So here. We will see eight nuclei at the end of complete development of the embryo sac. So in fritillaria type, this fritillaria uh, type also shows one plus three condition. That is, uh, one megaspore nuclei is arranged at the uh, micropylar end. The remaining three are at the calazal end. Okay, so the three nuclei which are present at the calazal end they undergo fusion, they fuse together to form a triploid, triploid nucleus. Okay, see, this is the triploid nucleus. All the three nuclei which are present at the calazal end, they fuse together to form a triploid nucleus. Here, this is a haploid nucleus and here this is at the calazal end, triploid nucleus. So, these nuclei which are at the two poles, they undergo two more mitotic divisions. The haploid nuclei undergo first mitotic division results in the formation of two nuclei and these two nuclei again undergo one more mitotic division resulting in the formation of four nuclei. In the same way, at the calazal end also, the triploid uh, nuclei which is present at the calazal end, it undergoes first mitotic division resulting in the formation of two and the second mitotic division resulting in the formation of two more. As a whole, four triploid nuclei present at the calazal end in the same way four haploid nuclei present at the micropylar end out of which one from each end that is from the calazal end and uh, one from the uh, micropylar end moves towards the center. The one which comes from the uh, calazal end is triploid in nature. It is triploid in nature and the one which is uh, from the micropylar end it is haploid. So triploid plus one more nucleus gives rise to a tetraploid secondary polar nucleus. See, a tetraploid secondary polar nucleus is formed here. And the remaining three which are present at the micropylar end develops the cell membrane and uh, egg apparatus formation takes place. The central one, which is a bigger one, is the egg cell and the two are the synergies. Okay. So, the three... Uh, which are present at the calazal end, they form the antipodals. But here, the antipodals are 
3 n in condition because they are formed by, from the triploid nucleus okay so this triploid nucleus also develop the cell membrane and forms the antipodals these antipodals may uh, degenerate uh, either before or after the fertilization so this is eight nucleate tetrasporic type in fritillaria the next one is the eight nucleate tetrasporic type in plumbago plumbago shows 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 condition and here the nuclei which are present at uh, four ends they undergo one mitotic division resulting in the formation of uh, eight nuclei here see you can see eight nuclei only one mitotic division it underwent and the eight nuclei are formed out of eight nuclei one from each end moves towards the center one from each and most was the center resulting in the formation of again a tetraploid secondary polar nucleus and the remaining four which are present one at the micropylar end it uh, develops the cell membrane and forms the XL here you cannot find the synergies only XL is seen you see neck apparatus only one cell in plumbago okay and the remaining three which are at the three ends they form the antipodals soon after they will degenerate only xl and this uh, secondary nucleus which is tetraploid in nature is uh, they, they only remain okay so this is the plumbago type of eight nucleate tetrasporic type of embryo sac development the last one in eight nucleate tetrasporic types is adoxa type Adox in adoxa uh, the arrangement is uh, a little bit different see here uh, during after soon after the meiosis the four nuclei are arranged two at each pole that is at uh, calisal end you can see two nuclei and at the micropylar end two nuclei so these two nuclei undergo only one mitotic division resulting in the formation of four nuclei two nuclei divides resulting in the formation of four nuclei here also at the micropylar end uh, these two nuclei undergo one mitotic division resulting in the formation of four nuclei as a whole you can see eight nuclei are present okay so out of eight one from each corner that is each end each polar end that is from carousel end and from micropylar end move towards the center and they fuse together to form secondary polar nucleus so what is the importance of the secondary polar nucleus it fuses with one of the male gametes Two male gametes are released into the embryo sac. One fuses with the XL and the other with the secondary polar nucleus. And uh, the resultant uh, structure is primary endosperm nucleus. In this case, only two polar nuclei are present. So one male gamete comes and fuses with this, resulting in the formation of a triploid primary endosperm nucleus. So the, it is very important because it uh, provides nourishment to the developing embryo okay so here a secondary nucleus with the 2n number is formed and the remaining three which are present at the calisal end they develop into antipodals okay this is adoxa type what you have to remember is 2 plus 2 arrangement of uh, nucleus are seen in adoxa type okay so this is eight nucleate tetrasporic type in adoxa. The next one and the last one is plumbugella type. Here you can see only four nuclei at the end. Okay. So uh, here the plumbugella shows one plus three arrangement again, one at the micropylar end and the three nuclei at the calisal end. The three nuclei which are present at the calisa, they fuse together and uh, resultant is a triploid nucleus this is the tri triploid nucleus which is present in 3n condition okay and the one which is present at the micropylar end is haploid it is n and this uh, two nuclei which are present at the calisal and micropylar end they undergo mitotic division only one mitotic division resulting in two nuclei at the two triploid nuclei at the Calisal end and two haploid nuclei at the micropylar end, out of which 
one from each end moves towards the center. Okay. So one from here and one from here moves towards the center. This is triploid, this is haploid. So as a whole, a tetraploid secondary polar nucleus formation takes place. And the remaining one, it develops the cell, uh, cell membrane and uh, forms into a X cell. No synergies are present in the Plumbugella type, type as well. See, no synergies are present. Only X cell is seen and only one antipodal is seen and which, uh, which is triploid in nature. Triploid antipodal is seen. So this is four nucleate. How four nucleate? Here one nucleus which is triploid in nature. This is a one triploid nucleus. This is one haploid and this is one haploid. See one, two, three, four nucleus. So these uh, four nuclei, four nucleated uh, uh, structure, we call it as four nucleate tetrasporic type of embryo sac. But the three which comes from the calcel end and one from the micropylar end, they fuse together to form the um, secondary polar nucleus. So this is about the different types. That is, uh, one more time you will see, see, tetrasporic types are classified into seven types. 16 nucleated three, peperomia, penia, drusa. 8 nucleated 3, Fritillaria, Plumbago, and Adoxa. And 4 nucleated 1, that is Plumbugella type. Okay. So, this is the tetrasporic type of embryo sac development. And the last topic of uh, today's lesson is the mature embryo sac in angiosperms. The mature embryo sac in angiosperms shows three parts. What are the three parts? Uh, the one which is towards the micropylar end is agaparatus. This is the agaparatus and the one which is at the calcel end is known as antipodals. It has three cells. Okay. This is the normal type of uh, embryo, uh, embryo sac structure in angiosperms. It has three parts. The agaparatus, the antipodals and the centrally located the larger cell which has two polar nuclei. So this is the large cell. These are the three cells in egg apparatus and these are the three cells in uh, antipodals. So one, two, three uh, antipodals, three egg apparatus, six cells and the centrally located the larger cell. So as a whole seven cells, three plus three plus one. To seven cell structure, okay. Seven cell, and how many nuclei are uh, there? One, one, one that is three nuclei at the antipodals, three nuclei at the in the egg apparatus, and two polar nuclei. Three plus three plus two condition number of nuclei, three plus three plus two that is a total of eight nuclei, seven cell and eight nucleated structure. This is the typical type of embryo sac in angiosperms which shows seven cells and eight nucleus. You can see once again here three nuclei are present in three antipodals, three nuclei are present in egg apparatus that is one egg cell and two synergies one each and the two nuclei at the center in the larger cell central cell. So as a whole three plus three plus two eight nucleated structure and seven cell structure okay now we will see one by one okay this is the egg apparatus which is present at the micropylar end it shows three cells the centrally located bigger one is x cell and the two which are present at the lateral sides are synergies so you, uh, you find a filiform apparatus, a hook-like structure present in the uh, synergies, uh, which is absent in the uh, egg cell. No hook-like structure or this filiform apparatus is seen in egg cell. They are present only in the synergies. And what is the function of this filiform apparatus? Uh, they, func uh, they, they function as hostoria. They 
absorb the nutrition from the adjacent tissues and also plays important role in entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac. The pollen tube enters into the pollen uh, embryo sac uh, from this filiform apparatus only. Okay, so and uh, one more difference uh, between this XL and the synergies. You can see the XL has a larger and conspicuous nucleus at the upper side and a big um, vacuole is seen at the lower end. See like this here you can find a big large nucleus and here a big vacuole is seen in XL. Whereas in the synergies you see the vacuole is at the upper side that is at the callosal end and the nucleus is present at the micropylar end. See this is the vacuole and here this is the nucleus. Nucleus is present at the micropylar end whereas in the, in the XL the nucleus is present towards the callosal end. So this is the difference. Okay, Presence of filiform apparatus and presence of nucleus uh, towards the micropylar end uh, with uh, a big vacuole towards the callosal end. Okay. These are synergies and this is the XL. And what, what is the function of the synergies? They help the pollen tube to enter into the embryo sac. Okay. And uh, what happens to the XL after fertilization? So the pollen tube carries two male gametes. One of the male gametes fuses with the XL resulting in the formation of a zygote, a diploid zygote. The XL is applied in nature and the uh, male gamete also applied in nature because all these structures are formed as a result of meiosis. So these applied, uh, two, two haploid cells that is one male gamete and the uh, female gamete fuses together to form a zygote. So uh, one more male gamete which is released into the embryo sac, it goes and fuses with this polar nucleus, centrally located polar nuclei. This is the male gamete. So these three nuclei together form the primary endosperm nucleus. Primary endosperm nucleus. P-E-N. Primary endosperm nucleus, which is triploid in nature. Which is triploid in nature, which later on undergoes many divisions and uh, forms the endosperm. The endosperm which is formed as a result of divisions in the primary endosperm nucleus is triploid in nature. All the angiosperms show triploid endosperm whereas in gymnosperms it is employed in nature because it is pre-fertilized product but here it is post-fertilization uh, product and it is triploid in nature. Okay. So this is the centrally located polar nuclei. They convert into endosperm okay and the three cells which are present at the callosal end they're called antipodals they don't have any role uh, in fertilization so either before fertilization or after fertilization they disintegrate okay so this is the typical angiospermic embryo sac it shows seven cells and eight nucleus seven cells and eight nucleus. So this is today's lesson. In our next class, we will see the next topic. Okay.